So, in this part of this lecture, I will basically talk about this uh, energy storage systems and this is the last part of module 7. Uh, in, mod in the first part, we discuss uh, this different types of distributed generation systems and the impact of distributed generation units uh, on the uh, distribution networks. Okay. So, here we will talk about this energy storage system. Let us see what uh, are those things. So, energy storage system is basically thought about uh, only battery in previous days, but uh, nowadays there are different forms of energy storage systems and for power uh, system engineers. Uh, this uh, battery is uh, a uh, very, very important uh, thing, particularly those who are working in uh, power generating station and also power distribution substation, because this battery provides or energy storage systems provide uh, a critical yet very important uh, part that is uh, this power during uh, uh, blackout condition or power during cold start condition. Okay. So, uh, we need electrical power in order to start in any, any unit during cold start when the unit was not operating any parts any parts of the unit is was uh, not operating. Okay. So, energy storage system were only used to provide back, uh, this power or emergency power during coal start, coal start up of generation units. Okay. But nowadays, uh, this energy storage systems are used to store energy available from the renewable sources and thereby to provide whenever this network demands that. In fact, uh, I already discussed in my last lecture, this uh, most of the renewable energy sources uh, are of uh, intermittent in nature. For example, solar uh, photovoltaic uh, wind energy, I discussed in the last two lectures that how they are dependent on the weather condition. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, their generation varies uh, throughout the day. Okay. So, uh, but again uh, for a distribution network uh, operator, as we know that our loads are certain entity which are also varying throughout the day. Therefore, uh, it may so happen that there are some period of time when uh, generation is uh, this renewable gener generation units uh, they generate very high amount, but load demand is very poor, load demand is very low during that time moment. Also, it may so happen that when load demand is very high. Uh, this renewable uh, generating generation units are not generating uh, much amount of energy. So, therefore, uh, there might be mismatch and there often uh, this distribution network operator they often foresee these mismatches. Okay. So, energy storage system uh, will play an important role or vital role uh, in order to uh, store the energy. Uh, when we have surplus energy from these renewable energy sources and also uh, it can provide uh, energy whenever there is a deficit energy. Uh, that means, whenever our demand is very high, but renewable energy generators do not uh, generate much amount of power. Okay. So, therefore, uh, storing energy from these variable resources could be used more efficiently whenever required. Okay. So, storage application can be used to mitigate congestion patterns and during peak load demand time. So, the storage can be efficiently used particularly during peak demand uh, to sub to meet that peak demand. Okay. Now, there are different types of storage units. Okay. As I said, we are only uh, thought of these batteries uh, which are the um, uh, only type of storage, but nowadays we have different types, which include compressed air energy storage CAES. What is this? I will come to that. Then pumped storage units, 
this is a kind of hydro power station, I will also come to that. Then superconducting magnetic energy storage, uh, super capacitor, hydrogen energy which is a type of uh, storage nowadays which is in the form of fuel cell. I will also discuss what is fuel cell, how it operates and how efficiently we can use it. And also uh, another type flywheel then of course, this we have batteries. Now, this figure will give you a glimpse of idea that uh, what are the different types of uh, energy storage systems and also how they are different to each other in view of this uh, power rating as well as discharge time or rated power. Okay. So, if you look at, at the bottom, you can see this uh, super capacitor, uh, it is capable of providing up to 1 megawatt of power for a few second only. That means, it has very high power capacity, but its discharge time is very, very less. So, super capacitor as we know that it is a special type of capacitor, which can uh, be rated uh, very high value in the range of kilowatt or even megawatt but it discharge time is less, it means that it power density is very, very high, but energy density is not much high. So, it can be used whenever we need this for a few second, when whenever we need support for this amount of power for a few second. Okay. Similarly, uh, superconducting magnetic energy storage is another type which can provide you several megawatt of power for a few second it is basically a typical type of uh, storage unit. And high oil uh, is also another type, it is a mechanical type of storage. Uh, it is rarely used, but uh, it can provide a megawatt range of power for a few second. And these are the different forms of the battery, nickel, cadmium, NIMH stands for nickel metal hydride and also lead acid battery we know and lithium ion battery finally. So, if you look at this battery. Uh, they are have different features. This nickel metal hydride, it can provide um, up to megawatt of power uh, for a few minutes. Okay. Similarly, nickel, uh, cadmium, uh, nickel cadmium as well, it can uh, uh, provide you uh, some few kilowatt of power for a bit higher time than this metal hydride. Lead acid battery all we know, we use in our day to day uh, purpose. Uh, this can be also used to, to provide power in a range of megawatt for a several minutes. And finally, we have lithium ion which we use in our mobile laptop etcetera. This is a uh, you know uh, latest type of this uh, battery which is extensively used in various applications. I will come to that. Okay. Now, there are other forms of battery as well which are called flow batteries uh, which are similar to fuel cell. Uh, higher uh, this electrolyte is used, it flows from one part to another part. Also, we have advanced lead acid battery, where capacity is much higher, uh, that is up to 100 megawatt and so, and it discharge time is also close to one hour and even few hours. Similarly, that uh, this is another form that is called compressed air energy storage CAES, where uh, you know that air is compressed and stored uh, in, in uh, some place mostly underground, uh, specifically uh, this uh, salt mines, uh, exhausted salt mines are used to act as a compressed air energy storage system, where air, air is stored uh, in a compressed form and then uh, it is released to provide uh, combustion. Uh, to the gas turbine unit okay. and it is found to be an efficient form of uh, energy storage okay. because as we know that in gas turbine uh, generation unit, uh, we, we need uh, compressed air and there used to be a compressor there. Okay. So, instead of that we can use this compressed air energy storage uh, to, to uh, have a effective combustion of this gas turbine unit. Okay. There are other forms of battery called uh, sodium sulfur battery and also there is another type of storage which is called pumped hydro. Uh, this pumped hydro is a special type of hydro generating station where we have uh, two water reservoirs. 
one is on the uh, top of a hill another is at the bottom. So, in normal hydro uh, we have only one reservoir at the top as you know this hydro energy we uh, generate by utilizing this potential energy of the water. So, we need some uh, storage of the water and also we need some head or differential height from this uh, top reservoir to the uh, ground where we have this power generating station. Now, uh, this differential height is called head. Now, uh, similar to this hydro power generating station in uh, pumped hydro, we have also uh, a reservoir on the top of a hill and another reservoir at the uh, tail race. We call it tail race, where we have this uh, generating station or generator, generator turbine unit located near to that. Okay. And the difference between a pump storage unit and a normal hydro generation unit is that uh, in uh, hydro generation unit, uh, we, we discharge water from this top reservoir whenever we require generation. Okay. But here in the pumped hydro, we also uh, uh, pump back this water from the downstair to the top hill okay. uh, and thereby uh, we can utilize this water uh, whenever we need this uh, uh, higher amount of power or whenever we have a peak power demand. So, this is a very, very uh, important type of generation system which is uh, used to uh, uh, meet this peak load demand. Okay. So, during off peak time or during night time when uh, power demand is very less our thermal power generation units which generate uh, which could generate a huge amount of power they are used in a uh, you know uh, for they are used to generate a lesser amount much lesser amount of power than what they could generate. So, those time when we have uh, the sufficient amount of uh, power uh, or energy capacity available we can utilize this uh, to to run this pump storage unit to pump back the water from the tail race point to the top reservoir. Okay. So, that uh, when we have the uh, deficit amount of power that means, when our demand is much higher than the our generation capacity, we can release those water uh, to, to uh, meet this peak demand. Okay. So, advantage of this pump hydro that it can provide gigawatt of power and with a very, very uh, long time may be 4 hours, 5 hours and so, but uh, this construction of this pump hydro is a uh, uh, costlier part, uh, it, it is very costly and it needs uh, various uh, large amount of spaces, it needs uh, various other environmental uh, aspects to encounter. Okay. But other than that, uh, this CAS it is also in, uh, used in some part of the world and other types of batteries they can also used as the storage. Okay. So, let me discuss this uh, different types of storage units one by one. So, first of all superconducting magnetic energy storage system SMES. It is basically uh, a type of magnetic energy storage by flowing of direct current in a coil of superconducting material and that superconducting material is immersed in a liquid helium at a temperature of as low as 4.2 Kelvin. Look at this unit of this temperature, it is not degree Celsius, it is basically Kelvin. So, you can understand that how much cold it is. Okay. So, when a superconducting material is immersed in a uh, liquid helium in a vacuum uh, insulated cryostat uh, chamber, then it can uh, store some amount of electrical uh, magnetic energy. And thus, this form of this energy storage that is SMES can be used as controllable current source, can be used as a controllable current source whenever we require it. But of course, this uh, SMES needs to be connected with some power electronic converter inverter systems, so that we can use this controllable current for a specific purpose. Okay. Now, 
as I said these batteries are old very very old and uh, matured form of uh, energy storage, but we have different forms of battery and uh, we have still uh, uh, you know in search of the uh, most superior form of the batteries which we could use for power storage or energy storage in the utility level and with the economical way. Okay. So, batteries are some of the special type of energy storage system with efficiency is almost very high and it can respond this load changes uh, almost instantaneously and uh, lead acid battery uh, in the advanced form can be used as a store uh, as to provide power in a range of 10 megawatt for a duration of 4 hours. Okay. And you know that although this input output energies of the battery are of electrical, so that means uh, battery can be charged with electricity and it is discharged as also in the form of electrical power, but its storage is in chemical form. Okay. So, that chemical process gives you uh, the energy storage as well as energy charging and discharging. Okay. So, uh, we have some electrolyte and we have some electrodes to which constitute a battery that probably you know and there are two types of battery one is non -re rechargeable and other is rechargeable, but here we are talking about rechargeable batteries only that is secondary types of battery. So, in the secondary batteries which are of rechargeable, the ambient temperature is an another important aspect, uh, it operates in the ambient temperature and high operating temperature batteries uh, also are available, they are of molten electrolyte form and rechargeable lead acid and nickel cadmium batteries are also used for utility level energy storage, but of course, uh, this price etcetera is to be considered in order to uh, select that a part particular type of battery for a specific purpose. Uh, this figure provides a good information to show the improvement of battery performance or it, it provides an evolution of battery technology. Okay. So, here you can see in this axis uh, it is energy density that is energy per unit uh, mass and here it is uh, the introduction of a specific type of energy. So, as we know lead acid battery is the oldest form used for at least two centuries. Then we have nickel iron with a superior form of energy density. Then we have nickel cadmium, then we have nickel metahydrite with higher value of energy uh, density and then we have present a lithium ion which is having the highest value of energy density till today. Okay, and till this technology is increasing uh, and we are in also search of uh, a superior form of this battery with uh, cheapest possible uh, cost. Now, there are some definition as I was talking about one is called specific energy, one is energy density, uh, another is but specific power. Okay. So, specific energy is amount of usable energy measured in watt hour per kilogram. Okay, so, whatever I talk about here is not energy, it is basically specific energy and energy density is amount of energy stored per unit volume and then we have also specific power, uh, it is defined as the potential for acceleration and ability to work in extreme heat or cold condition. So, this specific power is in terms of watt or kilowatt megawatt. So, there are different types of batteries one is as I said, uh, one is sodium sulphur, high it is hard, hard performance battery in which operating temperature is very high around 300 degree Celsius. So, therefore, uh, lots of heat will be generated that heat can be utilized okay, or can be uh, managed otherwise uh, the, uh, there would be a problem. Okay. So, it consists of liquid sulfur uh, positive electrolyte and molten sodium negative electrolyte separated by solid beta aluminum ceramic electrode. Okay. And there is another type of technology battery technology which is called flow battery technology in which the electrolyte is liquid and it is flowing uh, through a microporous membrane to generate electrical uh, charge. In fact, this is similar to fuel cell type of uh, storage, I will come to that. And this form of this battery can store and release uh, energy 
through a reversible electrochemical reaction and the advantage is the ability to scale system independently in terms of power and energy. Okay. For example, more cell stacks permit for an increase of power rating and greater volume of electrolytes provides more run time. So, scalability is another advantage for this type of energy storage. Now, as I said there are other types of battery one is called zinc bromine uh, in fact dif different types of flow, flow battery technologies one is called uh, zinc bromine, bromine uh, flow battery another is called vanadium, uh, vanadium redox flow battery. So, they are dif of different different characteristics, but also as we know that we have this uh, lithium ion batteries with as I have shown you with the highest value of uh, energy storage per unit mass. So, it, it, it is a uh, special type of technology which we use nowadays uh, in various applications which include uh, laptop, mobile etcetera. Okay. So, it has some greatest application nowadays and it has variety of shapes and sizes permitting it operate uh, to efficiently in a particular space. Okay. And also it is uh, one advantage is that it is of lightweight and highest power density. Okay. It is energy density. Now, uh, leading lithium ion cells design in combination of uh, lithicated nickel cobalt aluminum oxide referred to as NCSL and there are two types of lithium ion battery one is called lithium titanate another is called lithium iron phosphate. Okay. And finally, we have different types of uh, you know lead acid batteries which are most oldest and mostly mature uh, technology among all the battery technologies and they are also used for uh, you know high power application. Okay. And uh, they are basically advantage is that it is they are uh, it is in uh, a form of inexpensive battery technology. So, it is uh, the one of the cheapest form of this energy storage. Okay. Uh, also, we have nickel cadmium batteries where we have you know nickel iron and nickel cadmium pocket and synthetic plate batteries have been seen for various years of application and these batteries uh, biggest barrier is of their cost, but they are having good value of energy density that is watt hour per kg. And also we need to know that what are the operational problems we have battery storage. One is called that discharging of the battery. This is a in fact charging discharging of a battery is a research problem. How can you efficiently you can charge a battery during when we need to charge this or when we need to store the energy and also uh, how efficiently we can discharge. Okay. So, uh, so, based upon that uh, there are different works reported in the literature and uh, the students can go through this paper the different forms of the different types of this battery charging discharging often uh, these are considered to be optimization problem and uh, by solving this optimization problem one can find out the optimal way of charging discharging of the battery. But uh, one uh, you know there are some features uh, that you know one needs to understand that battery deteriorates with time and it has shortened uh, shorten, uh, uh, it can uh, shorten this lifetime if you cannot offer, uh, charge discharge uh, um, by following a specific way and also you know this some of the losses this battery uh, will encounter. Now, finally, I will talk about this fuel cell technology. It is not a battery, but it is a specific type of energy storage system. Why I am calling it storage? I will come to that. But this technology was firstly used in by NASA uh, for their space mission 1960s, and after that, there it is in uh, development stage uh, for uh, various uh, application, and there are various forms of this fuel cell. The advantage of the fuel cell is that it takes hydrogen as a uh, input uh, fuel and the byproduct of this fuel cell uh, if you provide input as a pure hydrogen the byproduct of this uh, fuel cell is only uh, water and some amount of heat. So, it is a form of clean type of uh, energy generating system or energy storage system. Okay. 
So, how this fuel cell works? Let us see. This is schematic how this fuel cell works. So, here you can see there are there is a anode and there is a cathode which is separated by some electrolyte membrane. Okay. And in the anode we pass hydrogen, we pass hydrogen uh, from in the anode side and then in the cathode we passed air or uh, sorry we passed uh, air or oxygen. Okay. So, when this hydrogen is passed through this anode, it there is a porous body here which is having some catalyst which used the hydrogen to split into a proton and a electron that you know. So, this proton they can uh, this electrolyte membrane uh, it is uh, made in such a way that this proton can easily move through this electrolyte membrane as you have shown in the figure, but it resists the electron to move. Okay. Now, if you connect these two anode and cathode with a uh, some electric wire, then this uh, electron will pass through this wire and thereby it will create a flow of current. Okay. So, that is uh, in very simplistic way of understanding the this working principle of fuel cell. Now, when this electron will uh, go to this cathode, it uh, there is a we have passed this air or oxygen at this cathode site. So, it will uh, make a chemical reaction with this oxygen uh, and also this H plus iron will penetrate this electrolyte membrane, it will reach in this uh, anode site and thereby uh, it will create uh, H2O that is water and some amount of heat. Okay. So, this is uh, the basic working principle. Now, depending upon what type of electrolyte membrane is used, we have different what materials uh, basically used for this electrolyte membrane and also what type of fuel whether we are passing pure hydrogen or a gas which is which is having hydrogen atom. So, based upon that we have different forms of elect, uh, P, uh, what different forms of fuel cell. Okay. So, fuel cells are basically classified uh, according to this uh, what type of electrolyte membrane is used and also what is the operating temperature. In fact, as I said at this anode we have uh, you know uh, by product of hydrogen uh, H2O that is water as well as heat. So, this heat will create some temperature rise and based upon how much temperature rise will take place we have different uh, classification okay. or we have different forms of the fuel cell do we, they are having different uh, you know uh, operating temperature. We can also uh, identify that based upon this operating temperature we can also identify that for which application it is suitable for. Okay. Now, as I said this electrochemical energy tends to increase this fuel cell temperature and as I was talking about this catalyst is basically used platinum to increase this step up this electromechanic electrochemical reaction and since it is it is having only byproduct of H 2 O and uh, heat it is environmental friendly and uh, so that is why you know a fuel cell is uh, is a will be upcoming technology in various application. Okay. And as I said based upon different types of uh, this electrolyte membrane we have different forms of fuel cell which include a uh, polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell, alkaline fuel cell, phosphoric acid fuel cell, molten carbonate fuel cell, solid oxide fuel cell. So, they are uh, often called by their acronyms PEM, AFC, PAFC, MCFC, SOFC. Okay. So, this table will give you a glimpse of this idea uh, about the difference among these different forms of the fuel cell. Let us first with uh, this PM that is polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell or sometime we call it proton exchange membrane fuel cell, okay, where uh, electrolyte is used as solid organic polymer and its operating temperature is very less 60 to 90 degree Celsius and therefore, it is suitable for transportation application or portable power. Okay. Here uh, we need only pure hydrogen as the fuel or sometimes we use some uh, methane or biogas and its efficiency is uh, 35 percent to 55 percent which is in fact not uh, as such bad. Okay. 
Now, this is a direct alcohol fuel cell where uh, polymer membrane or liquid alkaline is used as electrolyte membrane. Operating temperature is higher than this PM fuel cell. This could be also used for transportation application or portable power. Here, similar forms of uh, you know hydrogen or methane biogas etcetera can be used as a fuel and efficiency is similar to PM fuel cell even it is less than this uh, PM fuel cell. In alkaline uh, fuel cell that is AFC, temperature rise is similar to your PM fuel cell. Electrolyte membrane is used as aqueous solution of potassium hydroxide soaked in a matrix. Uh, due to lower operating temperature, they can be used for military or space application and uh, its efficiency is very high uh, 50 to 60 percent. Uh, so, it is used hydrogen as a fuel pure hydrogen. Similarly, in phosphoric acid uh, fuel cell, uh, this electrolyte membrane is used as liquid phosphoric acid soaked in a matrix. Operating temperature is higher than PM fuel cell that is 150 to 220 degree. So, therefore, uh, this higher operating temperature uh, enable uh, is used for electric utility for power generation and storage and efficiency is also very good and up to 85 percent if you can uh, use the regeneration of electricity from this heat available. In fact, the, this is the another advantage for these three part uh, types of this fuel cell where uh, operating temperature is pretty high, you can utilize this heat for cogeneration okay? and uh, that is why this form of fuel cell uh, are suitable for utility application. Okay? So, in molten carbonate uh, type of fuel cell, uh, liquid solution of lithium sodium or potassium carbonate soaked uh, material is used as electrolyte and therefore, uh, since its operating temperature is very high 600 to 750 uh, with the use of proper uh, heat management, it can be used for electric utility application and uh, it can use any type of uh, you know. Uh, uh, fuel which includes hydrogen, methane, biogas, etcetera. It is having higher efficiency and inexpensive uh, catalyst. In fact, uh, this major barrier for deploying this fuel cell is that it initial cost or it uh, uh, investment cost because uh, till today it is uh, they are not manufactured uh, in a small scale so that uh, this price will drop down. Okay. So, therefore, uh, uh, the, this is still today this fuel cell uh, uh, fuel cells are basically costlier and because of that uh, because of this they are expensive not many fuel cells are used for utility application, but uh, and most of the important two important things uh, which basically uh, influence the cost or price of this production of fuel cell is one is this electrolyte membrane another is uh, the, the catalyst used that is platinum as you know platinum is the costly uh, uh, costly metal. Uh, so, uh, that is why you know it is still today uh, this is not used in utility scale, but it could be used in future and hydrogen technology would be an upcoming uh, form of uh, this powering uh, the whole world not in terms of uh, you know uh, this utility application, but also in terms of this uh, change in transportation application. Okay. So, solid oxide fuel cell is having uh, very, very high op operating temperature where electrolyte membrane is used as solid zirconium oxide okay. and it uh, because of this high operating temperature, it, it is uh, uh, not suitable for uh, you know that um, transportation application, but it is suitable for electric utility application. It is having higher efficiency and uh, the solid electrolyte uh, membrane is an advantage. Okay. Now, uh, before I stop uh, this part of this lecture, I should clarify that why I call this fuel cell technology as a form of energy storage, because uh, you know that uh, as you have seen that the main fuel that we use uh, for generating power in fuel cell is hydrogen. Okay. And the byproduct of this, uh, you know, uh, this this fuel cell uh, is the electricity along with uh, water and uh, some some amount of heat. Now, whenever if we use this, uh, you know, uh, fuel cell, 
uh, we need the another major challenge is to uh, have have the availability of the fuel for example the hydrogen okay so hydrogen production is again a costlier item and that needs to be uh, done in economical way so that the whole thing would be economical okay but one can always think of that uh, uh, this this form of this energy uh, in the in terms of a storage uh, because uh, whatever this uh, h2o we are getting as a by product of this fuel cell that uh, from this h2o we can uh, again generate uh, hydrogen with the electrolysis process now, uh, if we have that provision along with fuel cell, then uh, this could be used as very good storage system, because whenever we have surplus power, we can use it to uh, uh, generate hydrogen and to store it. And whenever we have deposit power, we can take, uh, we can uh, run this fuel cell uh, to, to generate electricity and we can use it. Okay? Now, uh, this generation of hydrogen and generation of electricity can be done efficiently if we have, uh, if we can overcome uh, some initial, uh, you know, production uh, cost of this fuel cell. Also, we can, uh, there are some sort of technological, technological challenge uh, in terms of uh, production of hydrogen and also its storage. So, if we can, uh, these three things are very important. One is production of this fuel cell in mass scale, uh, that will be only possible if uh, it can be extensively used in various applications. Number two is the production of hydrogen, uh, it is also a type of costly uh, item, and number three is the storage of this hydrogen. So, when this technology will mature these three aspects, this uh, fuel cell, uh, you know, technology or hydrogen technology. Uh, would uh, suffice all sort of uh, different forms of uh, you know energy production. Okay. So, this form of the lecture I also prepared uh, from this Gonen book electric power distribution system engineering and with this I complete uh, this module 7 okay, for this course and we have only one module left that is module 8. Uh, thank you very much for attending.